Okay, so now that you have installed QGIS, when you open it, you should see something like what you're seeing on my screen here, though you probably won't have all of these recent projects. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to a new empty project and just double click on that. And you'll see, um, you'll see a, uh, an empty screen. Uh, this is actually the whole world. You can see when I move around my mouse, the coordinates at the lower part of the screen are changing and updating. Um, you just can't see anything on it. So when I zoom out, you'll see the scale changing, but it doesn't really mean much to us because we don't have anything on our map. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go up to plugins. You're going to say manage and install plugins here. And then once it connects to the repository, you're going to search for quick OSM. Make sure you have all plugins selected. You search for quick OSM. You'll see the checkbox means I already have it installed. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that. It should have the little green magnifying glass. That's the correct plugin. A plugin is just basically a, you know, an external little bit of software that someone has written to uh, piggyback on an existing application. And it'll do extra things, like in this case, download the geographic data that we saw on that map earlier. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on it, and you're going to say Install Plugin, which will be an option for you. And then once you install the plugin, you should see this little magnifying glass appear in your toolbar. So we're not going to go over all of these tools. If you want to know what each of them are individually, I would go to the uh, QS, the QGIS manual that I showed you earlier. We're just, I'm just going to be reviewing the tools that we're using in these tutorials because otherwise it's just too much to go over. So we're going to click on this little magnifying glass, the Quick OSM plugin. All right, and once it opens, we're going to have this window that pops up. We're going to just stick with a quick query. It'll be a little bit easier for our purposes. And what you want to make sure that you have selected here is in. So not um, around, not canvas extent. Canvas extent you might use for what I mentioned earlier. If you have a big data set like all the buildings in Richmond and you want to download them in chunks, you can download, say, the streets of Richmond just to get a sense of where you're looking. And then you can zoom in to an extent that the um, Quick OSM plugin can handle. And then you just say Canvas Extent here. Um, and you would um, download the buildings basically as you're panning around the map of Richmond. You would, you would keep clicking um, Download. Um, but for our purposes, again, we're just going to do this really basic. So we're going to say In. And we're going to type in here Blacksburg VA. It's pretty good at understanding. If you don't type out Virginia, it can probably tell where you're talking about. But sometimes you have to be pretty specific with it, um, especially if it's a place name that there's a lot of different versions of. Uh, like if, if there's a town that's a common name. You, you should also be aware with OSM that sometimes it's language specific. So uh, the, the name for a country or for a city might have slightly different spelling than you would typically see in Google Maps in the US. So to double check the spelling of things, again, you just go to the OpenStreetMap website and check how it's being spelled there for when you're querying the data. But for our purposes, really simple, type in Blacksburg, Virginia. And then up here you see key and value. So if I click this drop down menu, I see key refers to basically types of data, like what we were seeing earlier with um, building, right? So building is a type of data. Uh, like I mentioned to you before, roads are classified as highways. So if we find the key for highway, and then value is going to be within that key, within that category, these are kind of more specific things. So the types of highways, for instance, that are just classified as footways, right? Or the types of highways that are just classified as paths. Uh, for our purposes, we want all the highways in Blacksburg. So that's all we do. We type in highway here. We see Blacksburg, Virginia here. And then what you have to click is this green button here that says run query. You see all my query history here. You can ignore that. You can ignore advanced. You just want to find the run query button and then you click go. And when you see it's downloading data from overpass, that's generally a good sign. That generally means that it's working. 
especially once that blue bar disappears and it starts um, kind of reloading from the beginning. Okay, so as you should see, um, a bunch of roads will pop up on your screen. These are the highways of Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, if you don't see these pop up, what you can do is you can uh, right click on the layer and say zoom to layer and it'll center that data on your screen. Um, so at this point, now that we've got some geographic data here and we're starting to see the outline of Blacksburg show up, we're going to do um, a quick, um, what's called a, a, a projection uh, adjustment. So we're going to we're going to select a coordinate reference system that is appropriate for this area of the country. Um, and now you'll notice that I've had a bunch of layers pop up here. Uh, that's because I opened a file where I've already got these downloads, so I'm not downloading them a bunch of times. Um, yours are going to look a little bit different than this. So at this point, what you want to do is you're just going to go up to your project properties. Um, and then you're going to you're going to see here a bunch of different coordinate reference systems. Now, for our purposes, we're going to be using uh, one called UTM 17N. So if you go up here and you just search UTM 17N you'll find um, a bunch of options pop up. Uh, if you just choose the NAD83 one, you don't need to know what any of that means right now, just find this coordinate reference system, and then you say apply. Uh, and then you'll see a couple of options here. You can just say, uh, okay, that's fine. And then you're gonna say, okay. And you might see that your data disappears. Um, that's all right. If it doesn't reappear like mine just did, you just click on this and you say zoom to layer again. So now that should have updated, um, that, that should update your geometry and you should see that the outline of Blacksburg, it might have looked a little bit squished before, it should look a little bit um, better now. So the next things that we're going to do, uh, actually real quick, we're gonna, um, we're gonna go to project and we're gonna save. So, you know, save as whatever you want to save it as, wherever you want to save it, just save it in a place where you can find it again. Um, and you'll also notice that when you download these data layers from OSM, you're going to have what looks like a fuzzy little TV screen off to the right of it. That means it's what's called a scratch layer. So it's been saved only temporarily. And if you close this file and reopen it, that data will disappear. So what you need to make sure you do when you download these layers is you click on that little TV box or you just left click on the layer and you um, you say save scratch layer. So there should be an option that pops up that says save uh, layer as and you can save it as a, um, a, a geo package, a GPG file. And just make sure that you're saving it in a data folder that you create. So don't just save it on your desktop somewhere. It's really easy to lose it that way. Make a folder and save your QGIS file, your Blacksburg file, and also your um, your data in that folder. So just make sure all of your layers are saved in one place. So you can think about this like any kind of software that links layers. These layers are linked in. You want to make sure you don't lose those links. All right. Um, so now that you've got the highways downloaded, you can um, go back to your go back to your OSM plugin. And um, if you click on it again like that, it will open a new window. So, you know, make sure you close your previous one um, rather than opening a new one. Um, and then the next query you're going to make is land use. So go ahead and download all the land use um, data in Blacksburg, Virginia. After that, you're going to download the waterways. So that'll be all the rivers and creeks. So go ahead and download the waterways. And then you're also going to download the buildings, all right? So just type in building in Blacksburg, Virginia, run your query, and you should see those layers pop up. Now, another difference that you might see between what I've got here and what you've got going on is that you probably have a bunch of different layers for your highways, a bunch of different layers for your buildings, and so on. So um, OSM data comes in three different types. You have polyline data, which is lines. You've got point data, which is a bunch of dots that you'll probably see, and then you've got um, you've got polygon data as well, 
uh, or multi-polygon data. So polyline, polygon, and point. Um, points are just, you know, dots. Um, polylines are lines, right? Multi-lines, they're, they're also called. Um, and then polygons are any kind of shape data. So your buildings are going to be polygons. So what I tend to do is try to keep just one type of data for each of those categories that we just downloaded. So for the highways, uh, I would delete all the dots and all of the uh, polygons, just delete those layers, just keep the highways layer. And I like to, um, to rename things um, the way I've got them kind of set up. So I renamed this to roads underscore sidewalks because you can see I've got a few things colored differently here. To rename your layer, you can just right click on it and find um, Bum, 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 bum. Rename layer right here. Then you can rename your layer whatever you want. Um, save it out. Or when you save it, you can also rename it then. So once you've got all of your data downloaded, you should see your buildings. You should see your land use. Um, you should see your waterways. 